Before we start improvising, we need some structure. gives us confidence. So grab your guitar and let's have some fun with this classic groove. So we're in the key of B minor today. The root note here in the seventh fret of the E string. Almost always when a minor chord is the first chord of a progression, you can use the minor pentatonic. In this case, you can for sure use it because it fits over these chords like a glove. So the chords are B minor. E minor, back to B minor, G major 7, F sharp 7, back to B minor. We're really looking at the B blue scale which is the B minor pentatonic with the blue note added. Root note here in the seventh fret. And the B minor pentatonic scale fits over this, but you still want to be conscious of the chords that are coming up. Sometimes you might have to count the measures or just, just listen for the chord to change, but kind of anticipate that. The more you can hear those chord changes, the better improviser you're going to be. So on a track like this, I'm really looking at those root notes. Whether what position I'm in doesn't matter, I'm still looking at the root notes. So in the B blue scale, right here. 7, 9, seven because you can key off of those root notes as you're improvising it gives you a lot of confidence a great way to improvise over this track is use little boxes of notes and we we build those boxes off of the root note check this out so from the root note here in the seventh fret we have five seven five seven we have the root note here in the ninth fret. Seven, nine, seven, nine. We have the root note here in the seventh fret. So we have seven, ten, seven, ten. And then the root note here in the twelfth fret of the B string. Ten, twelve, ten, twelve. Using boxes like this can really help you with your timing and phrasing. Just flow from one box to another. You just went from each one of those boxes we just learned and it, it just helps you create some small phrases and then you can go back to the, the licks that you know and love. Really keeping that root, root note in mind. Take 37.
it is a fun way to play because you're not playing up and down a scale. You're, you are building little phrases and really saying something when you play. So let's break a few of these down. Sliding up to the root note here. Using this little box here with 5-7-5-7. Five, seven, five, seven. And using that blue note. Just 8 and pulling down to 7. Using the root note is a great thing to do, but you don't want to linger on it for too long. Just building that little box here with the, the se seven nine seven nine, and briefly going to the blue note in, at 10 here in the G, at the G string. And then building phrases from these two notes here in the in the seventh fret. Really keying off that root note here in the seventh fret. Slight bend. And using just using the box base basically. If you can get your alternate picking speed built up, you can really use this to your advantage. You don't always have to hit the root note, but really be aware of where it's at. Using that full bend there in the 10th fret of the B string, because you're bending to a, a B note there. That's always your friend with this kind of track. And this box is always your friend in the, the 10, 12, 10, 12. Your root note here in the 12th fret, a uh, little half bend here on 10, hitting 12, and back to 12 here in the B string. And that is always your friend, that little blue note. And that phrase is there in three different places on the neck. Once you start flowing through those boxes, you're actually playing the B blue scale extended version. You're only playing five notes, penta meaning five unique notes, but it's the way you play them. So if we use the extended scale, and go back to the first position. Extended. Using that type of playing with boxes really helps you, give, creates movement to some target notes and really just sounds totally different than playing this first position. But when you combine it to this type of lick,
I really believe if you grab onto a few of these ideas, you're going to flow over this track. I will leave a link in the description for this great backing track. These little solo boxes here can really just create some movement in your playing. So I'm going to start improvising with the extended scale and then I'm going to go back to the first position here. Check this out. It's so easy to, to go back and forth. It's still the same five notes, you're recycling them, but when you play in the first position, it just has a completely different sound than this extended scale. I really like the sound of that. You're sliding up to an F sharp note here. In the box. F sharp, box. Just love the way that sounds. And then using that blue note. And then that's a great way to practice it. Play the box, slide up to the F sharp, play the box, slide up to the F sharp. F sharp up here and then play that, grab that little blue note. Don't abandon this first position because it's your friend also. Really, I really like to focus, almost look, looking at a box right here also. 7, 10, 7, 10. And that walk down, I've showed that in a few videos, but this is so nice to be able to walk down that first position. Hammering on from seven to nine. And walking down. Nine, seven. Nine, eight, seven. Ten to seven. And then you, when you get that comfortable, then you can throw in this little hammer on pull off. So you'd be in the, the seventh fret, hammering on and pulling off from eight, then 10, seven. And then hitting your root note. This is such a fun track to play over. I will leave a link in the description for the backing track. Use the B minor pentatonic, but don't be afraid to venture out. Use that extended scale, even just a little bit, and go back to your friend, the first position. But going back and forth can really just give it a little different sound and really create a lot of movement in your improvising. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me today. We'll see you on the next one.